So how would you like to learn how to paint an otter in Ward's colours? Well, let me show you some little clips from my main Patreon video on how I painted some of the otter's fur. Let's get started. Right, so the first thing I want to do with this one is kind of dark underneath the chin a little bit more. So I'm going to come in with... Uh, this is a mixture of burnt umber and lamp black. Just a very thin mixture to begin with, but I don't want to go too dark to begin with. As I said before, the best way you can do this is to go come in lighter than you think you'll need, okay? Before you go in darker, because you can always go darker, but you can't, it's very difficult to kind of go back to light again afterwards. Once you've got the paint on there, as I say, it's not that easy to kind of revert back to the lighter areas without physically take, taking the paint off, which as I've shown you before, you can do. You can take a little bit of paint off if you want to. But also just depends on the paint in question, because um, as I mentioned, some of the paint does stain more than other paints. So it all depends on the paint that you've used as well. So I'm looking at um, the direction again this all goes in, trying to make this a little bit darker underneath. So when we come along with the white whiskers, they'll stand out a bit more, yeah? We need the dark for the light to show. So I'm going to put a few more around here as well. So I'm just keep looking back and forth at the photographs and I'm just, just trying to, you know, pick out where it's darker and where it's lighter. And I've had a day away from this since uh, last doing some recording. And I've come back with fresh eyes and it's amazing the difference that you're seeing. You think, oh wow, that's not quite right. So, <laughs> so you tend to kind of uh, see things with a, a fresh viewpoint, a fresh perspective as well. So let's uh, get a few more in here first. But yeah, it's coming together. It is coming together. Just a few tweaks and little tiny bits here and there. That's all I want to put in. Not too much to do before we go into the white. I think I want to add a little bit more kind of ochre colour into here as well. Looking at the photograph, it's a bit more ochre if that's the right word. <laughs> So again, just working on as we go along around the curvatures here. This kind of curves in, then comes out, then curves in, down this end. So I've got this zoomed out quite some way on the camera at the moment because I wanted you to see the full, the full picture so you can see where it's light and where it's darker. And you can see where I'm putting these darker layers in there. So this again is the brownie black. So burnt umber, lamp black. And the consistency is probably quite watery, really. It's not very thick. It's not single cream, even. So, it's not... I mean, it would drip off the brush if I loaded the brush fully, so... That's, <laughs> that's probably the best way I can kind of describe it for you. Um, so, I'm just trying to define where this curve goes around here. I just want to kind of get that feeling of the curve coming around. You know, and the way you're going to do that is just by layering all the time. Plenty of layers. A few more around here as well. So protect your paper as you go along. And I think, again, a few more around here. And this is where it kind of curves like a like an elongated S, as you can see around there. So it's all the same colour we're using, this uh, kind of burnt umber and lamp black. Just nice and watery, just enough to kind of make a mark as we go. Okay, so that is just about it for that side of detail. So what we need to do is go into the burnt umber. <clears throat> right, one second. I'll just review this for you. So just cover the camera up, so here we go. Right, so looking at the colours here, this is yellow ochre, and this is yellow ochre and burnt sienna, with a touch of burnt umber. Right, so what we're going to do is go for yellow ochre, burnt sienna, and burnt umber. Okay, which is that one there. Got that? Yes, Paul. Okay. So yellow ochre, <laughs> burnt sienna, and burnt umber. And all I want to do, all I want to do, um, is put a few bits and bobs in here. Oh, I'm going mad. I'm going mad. Just a few. Just to kind of warm it up a little bit. You don't want it too thick, so you want it fairly watery on this colour, otherwise it's going to be too, it could stand out far too much. 
so quite watery. Bearing in mind, we're going to be going over the top of this, there's a lot of this with white. It's not going to be a white otter, but it's going to be quite pale in comparison to the way it is at the moment. So a few more details as we go along. And keep going. Um, there isn't much on this side actually when you look at the photograph. There's, there's very few on that side, so it's mostly underneath the chin. And there's a few, probably a few around here as well. Just kind of add a variation to, to the colours in there a little bit. So it's, it's not all samey samey all the way through. Okay, so the next stage, we're going to work on the white, all right? Once all the white's on, we'll actually do the whiskers thereafter. I was going to do the whiskers first, but I think we'll do the whiskers last. Because that will be the final part of the painting. Plus also, it's easy when you've got a, a thicker white a line of paint to kind of go over the top of the detail. So we'll do the whiskers last, um, but let's get the white on next. Let's go for it. So there you go, that'll give you some ideas on how I painted the otter's fur in watercolour. Now if you fancy having a go at this and working on a complete video tutorial, I'll guide you through step by step showing you a variety of techniques on how to do that. I'll also give you the outline drawing, the PDF guide and the photograph to work from as well. To find out more, just simply click on the links below. And remember to click on like, subscribe and share and of course you can always comment down below as well. Now the question of the day is what do you find most difficult about watercolours? Let me know, put it in the comments below and I'll talk to you all again very soon.